In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make your own currency system in Roblox with a currency GY that updates every time your money value uh, is increased or decreased. So if this sounds like something you want to learn how to make, stay tuned to see how we made it. Open up a blank base plate or the game that it is you're trying to add this to. And the first thing we need to do is to add the currency into our uh, game. So first we will just add a main currency script into our into our server script service and I'm just going to rename this rename this main currency GUI. So the first thing we need to do here is to open a function which we will add the players uh, leader stats and their currency values uh, to their name. So first we can just do a function add currency and I'm just going to make currency with an uppercase C just so it stands out a little bit better. Also it's going to accept two arguments on um, parameters sorry. Uh, when a function is receiving it is called parameters and when it is being sent they're called arguments okay just thought I'd point that out. And the next one is we're going to put a uh, name of currency. Okay, so this is that's where you can customize the very own the name of your currency, so you can change it to whatever you'd like. Okay, so first we need to open a new folder inside the player. So we will do local leader stats equals instance dot new, and we will get the folder instance. And we will parent that leader stats uh, value to the players instance in game dot players. Okay. Forget to add the of the name of leader stats. So we'll just put leader stats dot name is equal to and just make that leader stats. This is actually very very important. So make sure you name it exactly as I have leader stats. Okay. And now we can. Uh, we can add our currency value. So for this example, I'm just going to add one value. So I'm going to do a local. I'm just going to call it uh, money or cash money uh, equals instance dot new. And we're going to create an int value, which is a value that contains a number, obviously. And a string contains a, a string value, obviously, of course. So money dot name is equal to obviously name of the currency we send that over later so name of currency money dot value now this is going to be the amount of money that a player starts with so I'm just going to start with zero amount they start with. okay so I've just thought I'd add that little note right there okay and we're going to do money dot parent is equal to leader stats okay and so now we have the leader stats uh, function completely completely finished we can call this function when a player joins the uh, player service the game okay so to do this all we need to do is we can do game colon get service players okay it's better to get service just saying uh, dot hold on, dot player added colon connect function and we need to uh, make sure we accept the players uh, the player through as a parameter so let's just put a player and we're going to drop a line so now we're just going to double check if the player exists so we're going to go if player then just in case they haven't joined and the game has immediately crashed because we don't want our script to error Right, so we will add our currency and we need to send two arguments, okay? Because over here it's expecting two parameters, alright? Like I said, parameters are when it's being received and arguments are when we are sending them, okay? So we need to send, obviously, the player that has joined the game, separated by a comma. And now this is going to be a string value and I'm just, this is the name, okay? This is actually important to remember. This is the name of our currency. I'm just going to name mine to money and 
Now if we join the game, as you can see up in the top right corner we now have a value next to our name under the letter stats folder. If I look inside our player you'll see a brand new folder and if we look in there, oh look, it's a it's adding the value of the money that we uh, currently have. Alright, so next we want to move on to making our GUI that updates whenever this amount changes. So let's click stop. Alright, so in here I'm going to add a new function that's just going to be to um, add currency, currently like uh, update currency. So we're just going to do function uh, update currency, okay? And we're going to accept the player argument with that. So we're going to do if player and player dot leader stats. All right, so some of you might be wondering why am I doing player? Okay, yeah, maybe we're checking why the player's there, but we're also checking if, if the player has leader stats. And you might be wondering why I'm doing that. Well, because we're going to be calling this function, all right, from the end of the add. So once the player joins in, we create the leader stats currency. And at the end, once it's all in the game, we are going to fire this function. But in case something has happened in here and for whatever reason, the leader stats folder has disappeared or been destroyed, uh, it won't throw an error, error because it is checking if the leader stats exist. So we can do uh, while, wait, I'm just going to make it one second, uh, do player dot leader stats uh, dot uh, money now remember these two values have to be exactly the same because we're looking for the name all right the name the currency name uh, dot value and we're just going to do plus equals I'm just going to add math dot random and I'm going to add a random amount between one and three Okay. Inside our currency function, we will uh, fire the update currency. So we can do update currency, and we're going to send over the player that has been sent from the player added event. Okay. So that should be our main script completely finished. Okay. So if we click play now, what's going to happen? As you can see up in the corner over here, a random number between one and three is being added to our money value. All right. So now we have our increasing uh, monetary value. Now let's see how we can make the GUI that displays the money value. All right, so we're going to want to close off of our main script for now. That is finished. And we're going to come over to Explorer, Start a GUI, Insert a Screen GUI, Insert a Text Label. Uh, obviously you can make your GUIs look really fancy and all that sort of stuff. But I'm just going to make mine look a little bit basic, uh, just for the sake of the video. And yeah. So I'm going to go to properties, make sure we set the anchor point to 0.5, okay? So it somewhat scales on all screens. Again, it still won't work from a lot of screens, but it should work for most. Uh, once we sort of make our GUI the way we want, I'm going to make mine Fred Roker. Uh, text size is going to be about 30. I'm going to make my text color. I'm just going to make it that and oh and my background color is going to be green for like money and down here I'm just gonna go text strokes transparency and I'm gonna make that so we can see the value better all right so once we have our desired GUI um, we can start scripting it so to do so, we are going to add a local script. I'm just going to rename this script to uh, let's just let's just do uh, update GUI. Okay. So let's first define the variable of our player. So the the player that we're looking for. So we can do local uh, player uh, equals game dot players dot local player, and we're going to First, just update the GUI's, uh, actually no, first hold on, let me just throw a little wait, just so uh, the script sort of waits for the player to load into the game. 
and now we can first change, we can do like the first change when the player joins the game, the first value that they see. So we're going to do script.parent.text equals. Now you can make this, uh, well I'm just going to make mine cache, alright? And let me just zoom in here for you, there you go. And we're going to put a space with a colon just for it so it looks nice. And I'm going to concatenate the uh, players leader stats dot money dot value. So now, if we quickly click play, as you can see, what had happened is that the GUI has updated one time. Okay, uh, it's updated for the money value just once, and we need to make it so it constantly updates the value like you saw in the beginning of the video. So let me show you how to do that. So for this, we're going to use a thing called get property change signal, which basically detects when uh, the when the cash value or the money value is changes, it's going to fire a function and it's going to just basically run this line of code again, okay? So just uh, copy this, okay? Copy this line of code, trust me. And now we're going to do player dot leader stats dot money okay, on get on get property change signal and we're going to get the value okay so we're checking what the value of the money is so when it changes we're going to connect a uh, a function and we're basically just going to copy that line of code in there again this line of code we're just copying and pasting that back in there okay so basically what should happen now is that every time the cache value updates as you can see down here in the bottom corner it is updating the cache GUI. All right. Anyways, guys, thank you so very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please consider uh, subscribing and hitting the bell. Maybe even leaving a like on the video. It uh, really helps out, you know? I mean, it doesn't take much. Uh, yeah. Other than that, thank you guys so very much for watching. See you next time.